ticking clock, a to-do list, and a man desperate to be a good father. Ethan's new life is more than a little depressing, particularly in contrast to Heavy Rain's previous chapters. But this is the man's reality now, and it's up to us to decide what he does with it. Honestly, there's nothing stopping you from just sitting on the couch, all broken and defeated like. He's been through a trauma after all, could you really blame him? But our newfound protagonist is not about to do that, or my version of him at least. He was going to create some stability, a sense of normality for his kid. That means doing the homework, cooking dinner, and generally stepping up to be the dad. But man, being the responsible guardian for an impressionable child is hard. Heavy Rain was the first time I'd experienced this particular brand of angst in a game, but far from the last. Proven a popular subject matter to explore in the ensuing decade. The Last of Us put us in the shoes of a reluctant man named Joel, tasked with leading Ellie on a post-apocalyptic road trip through the ruins of America. They fought, they bonded, and a good time was had by all. The supremely underrated A Plague's Tale entrusted Amicia with the protection of her kid brother, Hugo, in particularly confronting circumstances. Did someone say rat infested France? Life is Strange 2 put the brothers Diaz in the crosshairs of the law, forcing the older one to step up and set a good example for someone with superpowers that have the potential for both good and evil. The list goes on. Far from a bad thing though, give me a game that centers empathy and human connection over shooting people in the face. Don't make me do this! <laughs> it's just that there's been so many grueling choices. No more so than in the fantastic video game adaptation of The Walking Dead. Man. What the hell is this? Help! Go get someone! There's been a shooting! That all began when an ex-con crossed paths with a young girl named Clementine in the early days of the zombie apocalypse. You've been all by yourself through this? Yeah, I want my parents to come home now. I think that might be a little while, you know? Oh. Look, I don't know what happened, but I'll look after you until then. What should we do now? We need to find help before it gets dark. Yeah, it's not safe at night. Have you ever wondered what happened to that kid all these years later? Let's go. Stay close to me. Song. Dreadful sorry, Clementine. Light she was and like a fairy, and her shoes were number nine. Herring boxes without topses, sandals were for Clementine. Remember what we said? Always, Always aim for the head. We join Clem and AJ on a supply run that sets the scene of what a typical day looks like for the pair. What do we do inside a new place? We listen for monsters. After that? Uh... Come on, you remember. We... Find, find a, way a way out. The gist? Things aren't easy and life is crushingly hard. Who knew? 
For this family, survival means you're always on the move, only stopping for the essentials. Huh. Monsters. All tied up. They can't get us? AJ's hungry, lonely, and doesn't really have the anchor of knowing what the old world was like. They'll keep on keeping on regardless. No, they can't. But it's tough to watch them go without. Hmm. Front door is the only way out. I'm sorry. Good job. <sighs> Sorry, it had to go this way. She's been forced to grow up a lot quicker than she should have. Maybe this is the place they've been looking for, and they can finally let their guard down. Huh. They had a good thing going here. Can we stay here? We'll see. Over here! No, not quite. Let's get to the car. Their solitude comes to an abrupt end after the supply run proves less than typical after all. A genuine fight for their life ensues as AJ and Clem try to get out of there. It's scrappy, it's violent, and it takes everything they've got. And let me tell you friends, this one was genuinely no black. This opening chapter very much gives you an impression of how the game's gonna play as a whole. There's moments of exploration, there's beautiful character moments and choice-making conversations. And then there's those times where you've got to fight. And it wouldn't be The Walking Dead if you didn't have to kick ass and take names from time to time. literally minutes into the game, we know that Clem and AJ aren't gonna die. At least not yet. So let's see where this fight takes them. And that, my friends, is the end of Clementine and AJ. That was Mosey through. I'm Dan Clark. Thanks for watching. No, I'm fucking with you. They get saved. And just like that, the promise of a new camp awaits. The final season feels very familiar on a number of fronts. Most notably, Clementine. Her journey has come full circle. She's now the lead to AJ's Clementine. Walk a mile in Clem's shoes and it would be very easy to become cynical to the realities of her situation. Fall into a camp, camp falls apart, set out into the world once more to begin the cycle anew. It's happened time and time again, emphasized by the opening montage that chronicled all the major plot points leading us here. So what exactly makes these characters any different from the others we've encountered over the years? Not a damn thing. 
So you've been surviving out there a while, huh? Yeah. We've been on the road a long time. Take it you know how to handle yourself? Don't usually see people our age alone out in the wild. It's taken its toll. Been making a lot of mistakes lately. You saw the car. Don't be so hard on yourself. You lived, didn't you? The warning signs are there of all the things that could potentially cause the group to implode dramatically from the get-go. Infighting. Check. People not taking their predicament seriously. Check. People having serious issues with the ability to trust. Check. Okay, Clementine. These here are our official Ericsson psych evaluations and probationary reports. Okay. I don't get it. Well, these explain why all of us got sent to this school in the first place. And all the bad shit we did that kept them from sending us back home. So, what's the game? I figured if we're all going on this crazy mission together, we might as well know who we really are. So, I'll read some of what the adults thought about us. And you have to guess which one of us fits the bill. I'll make sure it's someone you've actually met. This'll be the first one. While otherwise a remarkable student, blank continues to be plagued by fits of anger, uncontrollable cursing, and repeated physical altercations with the senior faculty. This group skews younger and have a good thing though, that's worth fighting for. In another life they are all students of a boarding school for troubled youth. And frankly, who isn't troubled now? God knows, AJ is. You could turn and run, or you could stay and help to make this place home. Learn from the mistakes of the past. And Clem is desperate to put down some roots. For herself, definitely, but mostly for AJ. I made you some coffee. It was in the kitchen. Tin said that I can have some. I didn't steal it. When it comes to AJ, Clementine's most definitely got her hands full. Clem! You're okay! More so than Lee ever did. While Clem was easy to like from the get-go, AJ is clearly more troubled and damaged by the world. Gah! You little motherfucker! Hey! Hey! Uh... About time you woke up, your little boy just bit me! He's lucky I didn't take a boot to his head. Nearly took a chunk out of me. God, I'm so sorry. He acts out sometimes. He's been through a lot. Yeah, well, ain't we all? Don't see any of us sinking our teeth into either of you! Boy needs to learn some respect. He's not well adjusted and tends to rub people in the group the wrong way. Tell her why you did it. Because of my... thing? Yep. It's nothing to be ashamed of. Just be honest. Our protagonist has to defuse situations and play mediator when things get heated. And they often do. Yes. I'm sorry I bit you sometimes. When I get scared, I do that, but I don't mean to. I just... I just get scared, and I'm sorry, and I hope your finger is okay. Oh, Shug, it's all right. We can all get a little crazy when we get scared. Thank you for your honesty, and your apology. I did it! You sure did. As a child, Clementine often took in the world with wide-eyed silence and innocence. AJ, he's not so silent. He's got questions and lots of them. He often holds up a mirror to our choices, calling out hypocrisy, when actions might not align entirely with words. We're challenged to justify our opinion and reevaluate why we think the way we do on the regular. You can see his fear about letting his guard down when it comes to sleeping on top of a bed that's comfortable for once. Hey there, what are you doing? This is where I'm gonna sleep. <laughs> what? No, it's not. It's safe under here. No one can get me. The kid tries to act older than he is. Could I maybe sleep in your bed? Like I did when I was little? Yeah, come on up. I I'm not scared, just tired. Makes sense to me. Think you need that? There are moments that remind us just how much of a child AJ really is. 
like when he wants to sleep in the same bed as Clem. AJ? What? You're still little. Yeah, I know. Clementine, or at least my version of the character, is all about letting him have his childhood and innocence. You're too young to understand. You're just a child. So are you. I know you want to be big for everyone, but you're just a kid. Like me. Sometimes you're scared just like any other kid. So I'll help. You said I just might meet a firefighter one day. Until I do, I'm just gonna be one. Even if I don't get it just right, I am. Because all it means is killing bad people who hurt other people. And I'm good at that. Like, I think I could be the best at killing bad people. AJ, that's not the future I want for you. I love you too much, and I see you slipping away, getting more violent, more angry, more lost. You shouldn't be afraid of that. I won't let it happen. I need you to trust me, Clem. That I can tell the good people and the bad people apart. That I know when to use my gun. And that you'll let me decide for my own. Quite frankly, AJ can scare Clem at times. She's seen the best and worst of humanity. She knows that good people can do bad things, and good people can be irreparably broken. The red flags and warning signs are all right there that Clem is desperate to course correct for AJ's sake. For his innocence and his soul. I don't think you're ready, AJ. You're too little. You... you don't trust me? I can't trust you to make those calls. You can't? Or you won't? Can't or won't? Which one? I've raised you since you were born, AJ. And it looks like I have a long way to go. Things take a turn for the complicated when AJ learns a lesson. Okay. But interprets it wrong. Just let me become a bad memory. Just give me that. Please. He fucks up. Bad. Fine. The game is about living in the aftermath of this. We're going to fix this, you and me. I'm going to help you atone. Atone? It means make up for what you did wrong. We'll make it all right with the others. So it's probably not lost on you that I've been talking about Clem and AJ this entire time, but there is an overarching story to The Walking Dead. Essentially it's about protecting the school from a not so friendly militia. You'll be boarding ships and interrogating suspects and pondering all those murky moral questions The Walking Dead's so good at asking you. It's something of a minor miracle that the final season exists in a finished state. Telltale, The Walking Dead's production company, imploded unexpectedly midway through the season's run. Thankfully, Skybound stepped in to save the day. The shame is all the improvements made to this game hinted a promising future for the direction of Telltale's games, after a period where everything was beginning to feel a little bit stagnant. More gameplay, more immersive camera angles, more depth to the world through collecting and customizing. It's the little things. Orientating the camera directly behind your shoulder makes the environments much more engaging to explore. You can see the influence of games like Life is Strange here, which is funny given how much influence Life is Strange took from the Telltale games. The visuals once again emphasize style over cutting edge on the technical front, but that's also come a long way here. This is easily the prettiest Telltale has ever looked. Things are rejuvenated on the storytelling front too. There are moments of striking beauty, like the zombies in the barn. Oh. 
a decidedly more serene take on the TV show Zombies in the Barn arc. kiddo. It's all right. I'm fine. See? No bites. No bites. While the game has the whole rubber banded thing happening, where every playthrough is predestined to get to the same story beats eventually, the role playing is in the subtle details, and the subtle details matter. Ultimately, this is a fitting end to the series has kept me gripped for almost a decade. And the fact that every choice could be the last makes everything all the more engaging. Okay, that's enough. That was Mosey Through, I'm Dan Clark, and thanks for watching. Don't forget to mosey through to the like and subscribe buttons, friends.